Welcome to Beauty by Brie. Enjoy. <laughs> subscribe, hey, subscribe, Brie. subscribe. Hey beauties, it's Brie from Beauty by Brie. I'm coming back to you with a um, promise video about my VSG journey. Um, for those of you that don't know what VSG stands for, um, it stands for Vertical Sleeve Gastrectomy. Um, basically what that is, is a weight loss surgery in a nutshell. Um, of course, I'm going to get into that <laughs> later on in this video. Um, but basically, I am having weight loss surgery um, to help me get the weight off um, because I have been heavy my whole life. Never been skinny, ever. <laughs> um, so it's just one of those things where, of course, I've try dieting of course I've tried changing my lifestyle of course I've hit the gym six and seven days a week so um if you are here to tell me hey there's other ways to lose weight please save your breath um and just with anything and anyone you never know what someone is going through and why they are resorting to have surgery so it's nice to give constructive criticism but there are people who have said why don't you just eat less. Didn't think of that. So <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, obviously I've tried eating better. Obviously I've tried, you know, sometimes it's hereditary. Sometimes it's, you know, <laughs> there's a lot that goes into it. So if you would like to hear about my journey, please stay tuned. If you feel like you're going to come on here and tell me about some magical weight loss pill, <sighs> don't waste your time please because it's it, I'm not here for that <laughs> so um if you'd like to hear more about my weight loss journey stay tuned okay so basically um my journey started and sorry guys I'm gonna be looking down because I do have some notes here on my phone um so if you see me look down it's because I'm reading the notes um so that I can make sure I have everything straight. <laughs> um, but basically, um, my journey started in um, 2015 and the summer of 2015. And basically, um, I was hitting the gym, I want to say six days a week. I had a personal trainer. I was going to a very well-known gym um, that was, I mean, right across the street from my neighborhood. And so... Um, I actually signed up for the biggest package that they offer. That package actually gave me access to a personal trainer. So it basically, um, you know, gave me the opportunity to work with someone who was geared towards weight loss and fitness and changing your lifestyle and everything like that. And he was amazing. I mean, he had me doing the circuit. I was doing all types of stuff that I never even thought that I was capable of doing. So after about three months of trying that, I noticed that I really wasn't losing any weight and I was meal prepping. I was um, eating, you know, because a lot of times the misconception with, um, people who are overweight is oh you eat too much or you're you're overeating and things like that a lot of times we don't eat enough um and that's just you know something I think that isn't talked about as much I'm not gonna sit up here and say that I ate perfectly and I don't know how I gained all this weight no I'm not here to do that but what I will tell you is anybody who knows me personally will tell you she probably doesn't eat enough because I was one of those people who didn't eat breakfast. I'm not a morning person. I don't want to eat as soon as I wake up in the morning. Just being completely honest. But, um, and I mean, hey, you know, it's one of those things where it's like you don't realize that that can actually, you know, cause an issue as well. You're thinking, well, I don't eat as much, so it should be okay. But actually, that can slow down your metabolism. <laughs> so I had to learn the hard way. Um, but while I was working out in the summer of 2015, I was meal prepping. I was eating breakfast. I was doing everything that I was supposed to do. And I really felt like, okay, I'm going to get my life together. I'm tired of being heavy. Um, you know, I was just ready. You know, sometimes you just wake up and you're ready. And that was me. That was me. And so I was just wondering like, hey, why am I not throwing this weight off? Like I'm hitting the gym. I'm dedicated. I'm not having like many cheat days or anything like that. I thought that, you know, hey, this is it. This is finally it. I'm going to lose this weight. Well, um, basically, I go to the doctor because I'm just like, this weight is not coming off. It's ridiculous. Something's going on. 
And when I went to the doctor, um, they did like a, you know, checkup and everything just made sure, like a physical, made sure everything was fine, um, made sure there were no major issues. They checked my thyroid, they checked everything. And so my doctor comes back in and she's just like, and I said, I'm, you know, I'm here to get, um, you know, try to figure out why I'm not losing the weight and everything like that. And at the time I had already went to see, um, you know, a, a surgeon about weight loss surgery with my best friend. And so we were going to do it together. We decided, hey, you know, let's do this thing together. Um, we were both, you know, significantly overweight. And we were just like, you know, hey, let's go through this journey together. So um, that's kind of more so what took me to my doctor's appointment that day was just asking them to sign off for this surgery because I had already been to see the surgeon. And he told me that he felt like I was a good candidate. So basically, um, I'm at the doctor's office and she comes in the room and she's just like, okay, well, I think I kind of know why you can't lose the weight and I can't sign off for surgery. I'm just like, my heart is pounding. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, what's going on? And she's like, you're pregnant. And so I'm not going to get too far into the backstory, but my husband and I have been trying to get pregnant for, I mean, <laughs> maybe five years already um and so I just that was the last thing on my mind and it was just kind of like okay like are you sure because we have not even been trying I know they say that's when it happens but we weren't trying don't know where it came from it was just it, I was shocked I mean I was shocked. okay so basically um she's like yeah you're pregnant blah 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 so fast forward, um, I had to cancel the surgery, obviously. Um, and then later on, um, we actually ended up suffering from a miscarriage. So that pregnancy that stopped me from having the surgery um, never progressed. So that's another story time. That's another day. Um, but basically, I just I canceled the surgery, couldn't have it because of what happened. And so... Um, I kind of looked at it in a different way, though. I looked at it as maybe I wasn't supposed to have the surgery. Maybe something was going to happen. Maybe it wasn't my time for surgery. It was just so many things, so many emotions, you know, going on. And, you know, with having a miscarriage, that's already like something very emotional that you and your partner go through when it happens. So I kind of put all of that on the back burner. Um, I ended up losing about 40 pounds on my own, of course. I was very emotional and depressed at the time. So it wasn't a good weight loss. It was a stressful weight loss. And so um, I want to say three, four months, basically March of 2016. So that was 2015. March of 2016. Um, I fall pregnant again, and this is our rainbow baby. Um, and my son is now three years old. So, um, we got pregnant like right after the miscarriage. And I know that happens a lot as well, but, um, basically it was just one of those things where it kind of just, it kind of just happened for us. And we are very thankful and very grateful for my son. He's amazing. Um, he's our everything. <laughs> So basically, and I'm sorry, I keep saying basically a lot. That's like my favorite word. And I'm realizing that now that I'm on camera. <laughs> but um, so yeah, what happened was here we are almost four years after the first attempt for surgery. And I decide that, listen, I only gained 11 pounds during my pregnancy with my son. After that, you couldn't tell me I wasn't a fine, a, a, a cute girl in the club. <laughs> but basically, you couldn't tell me anything. Like, I lost all this weight. I was breastfeeding, of course. Um, and I lost a lot of weight. Um, I was, you know, I had probably was like about 10 pounds less than my pre-pregnancy weight. And so I was just like, okay, yeah, you know, like... It's going to happen. I'm going to lose this weight. And then, boom, my son stops breastfeeding. I don't stop. It's not voluntary. He just decides, mm, I don't want it anymore. And so I was just like, well, I mean, I could still pump. But, you know, after a while, it's kind of like, 
he's not drinking the milk and I could be saving the milk and I could be putting it in the bottle. And, you know, it was just I wanted to keep breastfeeding because I felt like that was what was helping me lose the weight, which I'm sure it was. But it was just like laziness took over. I just didn't want to keep doing that. And you can't technically you can breastfeed for the rest of your life. But I didn't feel like that was a, a way to lose weight. That shouldn't be my sole way to lose weight. And so um, basically keep saying that and so um I ended up gaining I want to say about after that I probably gained about 20 pounds quick because I started working and I was sitting at a desk I had a desk job and so I'm snacking I'm working I'm snacking and then um I leave that job and go back to retail and I'm on my feet a lot. And so the weight kind of just, you know, would come and go, come and go. Um, I stayed in retail for a while and then the weight kind of, you know, just, just sat there. Um, and then I got another job, another desk job. And I mean, I packed on like 30 pounds. I mean, not in addition to the 20, but I was now up to 30 pounds of weight gain. And um, I was just like, no nope nope I gotta do something and with this new job came new benefits okay <laughs> so I decided that hey now is as good a time as any to go ahead and move forward with the surgery so that's a little background backstory of um why I decided to um go forth with the surgery I mean this is something that I've been struggling with my whole entire life I was a an overweight child an overweight adolescent, over you know, overweight teenager, and now an overweight adult. And um, looking back when I was about 17, 18, maybe 16, 17, 18, I was always a bigger girl than everyone else. But looking back, I was then, I was built like, uh, I don't know, one of these thick girls on Instagram back then. But for my age, I was overweight. I'm going to insert a picture here. So that was me when I was about... I want to say, I think in that picture, I was about 19, 20 in that picture. So um, I hold on to that picture a lot because I'm like, I thought I was big then. Now I'm like, take me back. Take me back there, please. <laughs> but yeah, so um, that was pretty much my stature, my build. I've always had wide hips and thighs and everything like that. That runs in my family. I've always had large breasts and everything. So I mean, that's just, I'm, I'm assuming that when I lose the weight, it'll probably look similar to that. Could be wrong because I have a lot more weight on me now. Um, so who knows what it's going to look like. I really don't care. I'm doing this for the health reasons and the health benefits. Um, so when I say that I've always been bigger because of my age and like back then and what was acceptable whatever I've always been comfortable in my own skin but back then that was big to me now I'm just like that was not really that big so um the process of the surgery or the things that you have to go through will vary depending on your insurance so I have a major company I don't know the laws. I'm not even going to say their name, but I have a major insurance company. You guys probably know who I'm talking about. Um, and they do cover bariatric surgery, which VSG does fall under bariatric surgery. Um, it's basically where they go in and cut your stomach into the shape of like a banana. Or a sleeve is why they call it, you know, um, gastric sleeve <laughs> surgery. Um, and so they're pretty much going to take your stomach from being um, round and like this to like this. 
if that makes any sense. So it'll kind of be shaped like that. And so they're going to make it smaller, which forces you to eat less. So it's almost like a medical starvation. I don't want to say it like that, but I mean, honestly, when you look at it, it's like you're not able to eat that much food. So your body can only take in what you can hold. I mean, just like a toddler, they say, you know, their, their tummy is the size of their you know palm. I mean, you can only eat you know what your stomach will allow after surgery post-surgery and so um they go in and they cut your stomach down so that you can lose weight and a lot of people who have the surgery um have a lot of medical issues as well um including di including but not limited to diabetes high blood pressure um sleep apnea that's the one that I have. Um, all different types of, you know, uh, medical reasons, heart disease, things like that, why people have the surgery to rapidly lose the weight so that their health condition doesn't worsen. Um, so that's why insurance covers it. I get a lot of questions about, oh, you know, is this plastic surgery? No, it's completely different. It has nothing to do with the vanity part of it. It has everything to do with changing your lifestyle and your eating habits. It's a tool. It's not a secret pill. It's not a potion that you can take or anything like that. It is simply a tool to help you lose the weight while you're learning, you know, how to eat better while you're learning your new body and everything like that is going to help you not eat as much while you're learning to not eat as much because your mind is still addicted to food this isn't an addiction <laughs> and so you are going to have to learn how to kind of stray away from eating so much piling your plate up eating all the time things like that so this is just a tool um, and that's why insurance will cover it um, with my, and I don't mind telling you guys because I mean, I know I had all of these questions when I decided to go ahead and get the surgery. So I don't mind telling you guys. Um, basically, my deductible, sorry, I'm trying to fix myself up. <laughs> my deductible um, is $1,500. I had no problem <laughs> meeting that. But then my out of pocket expenses. That's a little different. My out-of-pocket expenses are $6,600. My insurance says that I got to pay that before I even have surgery. So out-of-pocket, I will pay $6,600. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm going to go to the hospital and say, here's $6,600. No, that means that all of the appointments I've had, everything, because my deductible... Pay attention because I didn't understand this. My deductible is fifteen hundred, right? So once I meet that deductible, insurance starts paying eighty percent of everything that I do. So if I go to the doctor after hitting that fifteen hundred dollar deductible, they're gonna pay eighty percent. I'm gonna pay twenty percent. That twenty percent that I pay goes towards my out of pocket, and so does that first fifteen hundred for the deductible as well. I hope that makes sense. I had to have somebody explain it to me multiple times because I'm just not good with that kind of stuff. I'm good with math. I'm just not good with like making the whole insurance thing make sense. So, um, it's raining. <laughs> so, um, I have to pay $6,600 out of pocket to have this surgery, which is a small price to pay to be healthy. So I'm not even worried about that portion. Um, so at the time of the surgery, I will have to, you know, give them that money. Um, my surgery is scheduled for June 3rd. It is now May 20th, 2020. And I am starting my liquid diet technically today. It's like one or two in the morning right now. And so I'll be starting my liquid diet today. Um... I had a couple of hiccups with my insurance where first they said the doctor was approved, the surgeon that I chose was approved, and they said he wasn't, then they said he was, couldn't find him on the list, um, all of these things. It, it was, it's been a journey, um, but they finally got it all straightened out, 
And now, you know, they called me on the 19th, May 19th, 2020 and said, hey, congratulations, your surgery is June 3rd. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then they're like, oh, by the way, start your liquid diets tomorrow. Okay. So I'm just like, and for, for those of you who know, or don't know, sorry, for those of you who don't know, you can't drink for a year after VSG. You can't it's recommended that you don't get pregnant for a year after VSG. These are all things you have to take into consideration when you decide to have this surgery. So I had just, got, because there were so many issues with, you know, the surgery day and the surgeon and when it was going to happen, I had just bought me a bottle of wine, honey. Like I had just gotten some wine. And so as soon as I got that call, I'm like, sips. Like, <laughs> Okay, so t today or yesterday was my last day having wine for a year, which is fine. You know, I'm not, I don't drink all the time, but a glass of wine, you know, here and there, whatever, is nice. So I was a little taken aback by that, but you know what? I'm so excited about the surgery and so ready to just get in there and do what I got to do that I don't even care. I don't even care. I had me a couple glasses of wine. I'm not going to front. I did. <laughs> but I wasn't like too, I wasn't too bothered by the situation. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I, ha I had a couple of hiccups with my insurance. They couldn't find the surgeon. Um, also with my insurance, they did require a six month monitored weight loss so that meant that i had to once a month go into see the dietitian let them check my weight i could not gain over a certain amount of pounds from the time that i started to the time that i ended of course they want you to lose weight but if you don't you know whatever that's why you're here that's why you're getting the surgery but they really don't want you to gain any weight because they want to see that you're actually trying to lose the weight or at least maintain your weight so um, throughout my journey, I did not gain any, I take that back, I gained five pounds, but it was, it would vary depending on the time of the month for me. So um, it would kind of fluctuate. So um, it was just one of those things where I always had an appointment around that time. And I was like, can y'all please just like change it to a different time or something like that of the month. And once they did everything was fine. So I think I ended off with a total weight gain of like five pounds. Was I happy? No. Um, but I was really trying, like even my coworkers were like, you just stop drinking soda. Like you just stop. Keep in mind, I haven't had caffeine in over four years. So, I mean, I was only drinking like Sprite and things like that, but they were like, you don't drink Sprite. I don't see you drinking soda anymore. I, every time I see you, you're eating healthy, blah, blah, Like, I was really, really trying leading up to, you know, my surgery date. But I just, I couldn't lose weight. I don't know. I don't know what it is. And so, um, you have to do the six months on my, now keep in mind, every insurance company is not the same. You're not going to have to do that on every insurance company, but, or with every insurance company. But with mine, I had to do six months of monitor weight loss. Um, and then of course, along the way, you have to go and see different doctors, depending on your insurance. Some make you see a cardiologist, some make you see like, um, uh, endocrinologist I mean there's just different ones you have to see my insurance didn't require that I just had to do a sleep study and then I also had to do um a psychiatric evaluation everybody has to do that it doesn't matter what insurance you have they want to make sure that you understand what you're getting yourself into and that you understand how the surgery works and um, I passed out with flying colors sleep study I had to do twice because the first time I went to sleep too late. I'm a night owl. I went to sleep too late and they didn't have enough data. So I had to come back again. And um, that second time, found out I had sleep apnea. And I was I would stop breathing. I think they said it was like 20 times a night. That's a lot. That's a lot. I'm like, I never knew I had sleep apnea. I knew my husband would tell me that I snored a little bit. <laughs> but I didn't know that I had actual sleep apnea. Like who would have 
thought whatever um a lot of people who are overweight do and that's because you are when you're laying on your back which i sleep on my side but if you lay on your back all that weight pressing down on you and your lungs and everything like that you just you kind of just stop breathing so i had to use a cpap machine i actually had to use it for i'm supposed to use it forever until my sleep apnea goes away but to get cleared for surgery i had to use it for two weeks straight let me tell you something that CPAP machine ain't no joke. It is so uncomfortable. It's hard to sleep in it. It's hard to breathe in it. It's hard to, I mean, it makes you feel like you can't breathe, but it's helping you breathe. That don't make sense to me. So, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, like I said, I had to do the, um, the sleep study twice, get on a um CPAP machine and do it for two weeks I had to be in compliance for at least two weeks and then they cleared me so um that was very exciting and also um let's see I had a lot of appointments like I said because I had to come see the dietitian and everything um now I'm on I'm starting today slash tomorrow whatever I'm starting my liquid diet and on a liquid diet, you can eat or drink or consume, rather, water, protein powder. I bought mine from the Center of Weight Loss Management where I live. Um, so water, protein powder, um, broth. So I did like chicken. I bought chicken broth, beef broth, and bone broth. Um <laughs> Sorry, I can't control my, my facial expressions sometimes, but I bought those. And then I also bought, um, I got the, the sugar-free Jello, sugar-free um, popsicles. And what else? There's some other thing. Oh, um, sugar-free Greek yogurt. Now that I'm going to tell you guys because I was confused and nobody told me. Yogurt automatically has sugar. You will be looking for zero added sugar. So you'll see where it says sugar like six grams, but then you'll see underneath where it says added sugar. And if it says zero, you're good. Um, Oikos, Oikos, Oikos. I'm gonna put the name somewhere, probably like here. <laughs> but um, that one, that brand is what's recommended for the two week liquid diet um it's actually called like the the yogurt the official yogurt of the nfl it's a protein yogurt and um that one is actually approved so if you're if you're going through this journey too and you're trying to figure out what kind of yogurt i don't know that's the one when you look it up online and everything they're telling you that's the, that's one of the ones that you can use and that's what i saw so i got it you can use chobani that's another one um the oikos actually cost less than Chobani so um, I actually ended up getting that one because the whatever um, and yeah so I mean those are the, oh and you can eat cream fat free fat free cream soup so and then lentil soups and pea soup you just have to strain it. You can't have any solids. So the lentil soup, of course, has solids, has the lentils in it. You'll take it and you'll either blend it up or you'll just strain it so that you just have the, the soup portion and not the actual lentils. So um, there's a lot of different things that you can eat on it. It's just you have to... You just got to be strong. Like, you just got to have the willpower. You just got to say, you know what? This won't last forever. It's only going to be two weeks. And I'm saying that now. I get hangry. I get hangry when I'm hungry. And it's like, I'm just anxious to see how this is going to work. Um, I have a lot of willpower. Um, I'm one of those people that when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So I'm not really worried about that portion of it. Um, I know it's going to be hard. I'm not saying it's not going to be hard. I know it's going to be hard, but... I'm not too worried about that portion of it because I'm one of those people who, when I say I don't want to do something, I'm not going to do it. When I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Um, prime, prime example, I used to be, let's 
cigarette smoker. Sorry guys. Um, I used to smoke and I decided one day, nope, not doing it no more. And I quit. And it's been, <laughs> it's been a while. It's been about a year now. So um, this, this is my second time quitting. The first time I quit, I quit for about two or three years. I know, right? Stupid. I went back whatever um but it's been a year and it's, it's not even just because surgery because I quit smoking before this whole process started for surgery so um I think it'll be fine and you can definitely do it too you just have to put your mind to it you just have to say you know what I'm gonna do this because the reward after it afterwards is gonna be so much more worth it than eating that piece of chicken or eating that fruit snack it's gonna be you know it's gonna be hard I got a three-year-old I still gotta feed him and give him snacks but my husband is very supportive and we kind of just came up with the fact that he's going to like you know make things that don't really smell up the house like sandwiches and like frozen stuff that he can just put in the oven and I won't really smell it so we'll see how that goes <laughs> but um I'm really excited. This video is getting really, really long. So I just wanted to, like I said, just answer some of the questions that I had when I was getting the surgery, how it works, how long it takes. Guys, it was supposed to only take me six months. It's been about eight um, because of the uh, issue of the surgeon, because of the COVID-19 that's going on, pandemic that's going on. So there's so many different reasons why I didn't have my surgery on March 3rd, like I was supposed to originally. <laughs> um, but it's, I feel like everything happens for a reason. And I just kind of feel like, you know, it's one of those things where I just had to be patient and that was happening. And I'm excited about it. So I'm pretty sure there's still a ton of questions that you guys may have. I just kind of wanted to give a backstory about my journey and my, you know, the reason I'm having surgery and everything. Um, if you have any other questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I will definitely get to all of the comments on here. Um, I am an open book. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, I'm going to do a reveal of like my weight now, my highest weight ever. Um, I'm going to insert pictures so you can see my body type and everything like that um, in my studio here. I mean, there's a way for me to stand up and everything and show you what's going on. But, you know, I'm just going to insert some pictures so you can see um, if your body type is like mine. Because I know I had the, I could not find anybody the same weight as me, the same body type as me. You want to see like what you're going to look like once you lose the weight. There's so many questions that you're going to have. And I have those same questions too. So that's why I want to do this for you guys. Um, so you can kind of, you know, if you have any questions, um, like I said, just feel free to ask. And I don't mind saying or, you know, um, I'm just, I'm excited and I'm just ready for this journey to really start. All right, guys, I'm up to like 30 minutes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, uh, share, and definitely hit my notification bell so that anytime I make a video, you'll know about it and you won't have to go searching for me or anything like that. So um, definitely, definitely follow me on my social media, on my Instagram, my Facebook, my Snapchat and everything. So I just want to thank you guys for sitting through this tremendously long video. Um, and like I said, if I left anything out, if there was something that you were hoping to get in this video that you did not get, just let me know and I'll be more than happy. I'm going to make a ton of these videos because I'm going to vlog my whole journey. So if there's anything I left out, if there's anything you want to know, just put it down below and I'll include it in the next video. Okay. Alrighty. Well, until next time, beauties, thank you so much for joining me. And like I said, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and ring my bell. Y'all have a good one.